need to get out there uh, just to him. deny he's the cross. He's attaching his soul to me right now. He's literally doing that on purpose. I was a dime, dude. You outside the footed that. You see that? What did, yeah, did you X that? X. Yeah, yeah. The passing. Oh, that's a pass of high quality. Well, the keeper deserves a lot of credit. That was a fine save, wasn't it? Well, they really had to be on their toes defensively, given the circumstances. Why are you running? Why are you running? Last chance. Last chance. Oh shit. Penalty, watch out. Oh, what a touch. What a play. Nice. Oh, go to me, please. I gotta get in there. Oh, oh yeah, play. Yeah. Back post. Let's go. We got the assist. Yo, what's up everyone? This is Lesky here and we're back with another FIFA 22 Pro Clubs player build. In this video, we're going to be going over the ball playing center back build. In my previous build video, we went over the physical beast lockdown center back. I posted a poll on my community page asking you guys which center back build would y'all rather see first, the physical beast center back build that I already posted or this one that I'm about to be showing you guys right now. The physical beast won, so that's why I posted that one first, but I promised you guys I was gonna show you guys this build as well because we, me and my teammate both used these two builds together as center backs and we won the division one title with both of the builds. So they're very good combo together in the back one big build and one a smaller build that's better on the ball a little bit more agile got better dribbling and very good passing ability while the other one's just kind of a beast and a rock in the back so it's a good combo and we won the division one title which was actually quite amazing we did not expect to do that to just win the d1 title both playing center backs and then nobody else on our team just playing with computer it was quite a surprise but let's hop straight into this ball playing defender center back build so like I mentioned in my center back video, my teammate was using this build that I'm gonna be showing you guys. He got all the clips for us. We got like 19, 20 minutes worth of clips of him using this build while I was using the other center back uh, build. So if y'all are interested in a more of a physical beast center back, go ahead and check that one out if you haven't already. But if you're interested in more of a playmaking center back, that's you can be more confident on the ball, better dribbling ability and really good passing ability, then stay tuned to this video because this will be the build for you but starting with the height and weight for this build we went for six foot 119 pounds since the other build i already did was like six 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 seven it's already a beastly build this one was focused more on just not necessarily the strength and the height and the physicality of the build just the passing good dribbling for a center back and yeah that was pretty much it and obviously good defending because that is necessary for a center back build. So we decided to not really make a tall, really tall center back. We kind of just went, I guess, average, or maybe a little bit below average for a center back, six foot, which really isn't too bad at all. You can even probably use like a 5'10". If you want to make this build a 5'10 center back, you can probably even do that. Just beware, you're probably not going to win a lot of the 50-50 balls in the air, especially if the other team has a big dude. So you could try this build at 5'10". It'll be a little bit quicker and stuff like that but you're not it's not gonna make much of a difference so we decided to go for six foot and then the weight is 119 like i mentioned in my other center back video if you go up in weight the pace just gets slower and slower and we're really not focusing on increasing the strength too much in this build so it's not really necessary because like one of the positives to going up in weight is gaining more physical attributes but you lose pace so we decided not to do that and we just went for six foot 119 pounds for this ball playing defender center back build. So now let's look at the perks that we have for this build. For the first perk on this build, we have physical strength, which I did just mention that we're not really focusing on increasing the physical ability or the strength on this build. But since it's already kind of low, having this makes it extremely important. And I just, this is probably one of the most well-rounded and best perks in the game. I like to use it on a ton of my builds, if you haven't noticed already. And especially for a defender build, a center back build, even though we're not focusing on getting the strength crazy high, it's kind of low. It's like high 70s, I think. So 
but having this on will basically make you have like what probably 80 plus strength or something like that we don't really know it doesn't say which i think would be cool if it actually told us how much it actually increased the strength and the jumping but this perk will boost your strength ball control and jumping when jostling shielding or heading the ball the jumping is already pretty decent on this build, so it'll make it even better. And you're not like the tallest center back build, so it's nice to have the physical strength just for the increase in jumping as well. Um, and then for the second perk, we have Precision Pass, which this is a ball playing defender build, so you'd expect to have the Precision Pass. And this is honestly a really good perk. Even if you're, the passing ability on your build isn't that great, you're just using like the other center back build that I made, you could even put the Precision Pass on that build and it would be really good. Mostly because you have the five star weak foot. We didn't go for any weak foot upgrades on the skill tree. So having the five star weak foot for every single one of your A passes, your X lofted passes, switching the field is really clutch. And it gives you the swerve and flare traits. And then it also just increases your uh, normal pass accuracy and speed. So those driven passes, those RBA passes or R1X on PlayStation, those are very good and accurate with this build since we have increased the passing ability on this build. And we have this precision passing perk. And remember that the precision passing perk works for like those X lofted passes. Like you're trying to just clear it out of the box. It'll go to somebody. It'll, it'll be more likely that it'll go to somebody if you're just trying to like X clear it out of the box. Or you're trying to switch the field, do like an RBX across the field, LBX, a normal X, whatever it may be. It works for that as well. And you'll see the swerve trait actually go into play a lot with like RBA passes and X passes, which I'll try and show you guys, see if I can get a clip to, that'll um, show how the swerve in action, I guess. And then for the third perk is the threaded pass, which I don't think he actually used on the build because he wasn't level 21 yet or whatever it may be to get this perk. I don't remember what level it is. So he actually didn't have the threaded pass on. So I think he just went for um, the ball winner or the last defender. He tried both of those. So if you don't have the threaded pass perk unlocked yet, try just going for the ball winner or last defender. Just increase your defensive abilities, which will be nice. Um, but if you do have it, you're definitely going to want that on. And if you're trying to make a decision between only having one of these, I would recommend precision pass is the go-to over the threaded pass. But if you have them both unlocked, try putting them on because it'll be a good combo. This will increase your vision, which will help you on your wide through balls, LBYs down the line, maybe hit a long ball to a forward or a winger going down the line, whatever it may be. So that'll in, um, increase your passing ability on through balls. And then also it'll give you the swerve and flare, just like the precision pass with the five star weak foot, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about what foot you're hitting the ball with. And you can honestly play like left center back, right center back with this build because it doesn't matter. Every single pass you make um, will just be with the five star weak foot so it doesn't matter like what preferred foot you have really with this build other than when it comes to like shooting and other stuff like that so those are the three perks for this build the threaded pass and the precision pass is basically what makes this the ball playing defender build and then the physical strength is extremely nice to have as well and honestly you don't really even need the ball winner or the last defender unless you don't have the threaded pass unlocked then you can do that but now let's look at the skill tree for the center back build. Starting with the physical page, you can see that we have a decent amount of skill points here. We went for the acrobat archetype because it'll increase your jumping, which is important for a center back. And also the stamina, which might not be like the most necessary thing for a center back, but it's kind of nice having good stamina. You can rely on having a lot of stamina towards the end of the game, which a lot of the forwards and uh, all the other builds that are going to be coming up against trying to defend. Um, if they don't have like the tireless runner perk on or a lot of stamina added, they're going to be pretty much dead towards the end of the game, like the 75th, 80th minute. And a lot of their through balls in behind are just not going to work because you're pretty fast and you have stamina and you'll have a lot left in the tank to make a lot of sprints and just chop down those through balls. So they won't be able to really do anything towards the end of the game when it comes to getting in behind on your defense. So that's why... We kind of increase the stamina, but mostly just for the extra jumping because the jumping will get us to 83 jumping. And this isn't the tallest center back build. It's six foot, not bad, but the increased jumping will definitely help uh, when it comes to like the aerial ability on this build, trying to clear those 50 50s and whatnot. And then also we have the physical strength perk, which will increase the jumping even more and the strength. And then on this left side, the strength is only one skill point. It gives you plus two strength. So it bumps up to 76 strength. 
And then this is just another stamina for plus three stamina. This might not be like necessary. You could possibly use these two skill points somewhere else if you'd like. But we decided to just put it on stamina for 85 stamina. And honestly, it would be nice to get this strength right here if we had more skill points, if I was like level 25 or something, to get exactly 80 strength and then whatever the physical strength perk gives you on top of that. That'd be really cool, but we just don't have the skill points for it. So we had to just leave this extra strength and just settle with 76 strength. But we have 87 reactions and 83 aggression, which isn't too bad. But again, if y'all are going to want a center back, which has a lot of physical attributes, you're definitely going to want to check out my other center back build I posted a few days ago because that one has a ton of physical attributes and it's just an absolute beast. Um, so let's move on to defending. This is it for the physical page. 83 jumping, 85 stamina, 76 strength, 87 reactions, and 83 aggression. Not bad for a center back, which we're not focusing on, like increasing the strength and stuff. So it's really not too bad. And on to defending, where we have a lot of skill points here. We went for the guardian archetype to increase the defense. We have 89 interceptions, 93 stand tackling, and 86 slide tackling. What you're going to do is go on this right side. Get these first slide tackling and stand tackling right here. Then go over here towards the middle, get the stand tackling, get the stand tackling and slide tackling, and then get the guardian archetype. And what the guardian archetype will do is get us to a respectable defensive awareness amount, which is actually really important. At first, I thought it was only for innies, but little did I know that defensive awareness actually goes into play more than just like being an innie. It kind of helps your player contain the def the the dribbler a little easier it's almost like you have a little like a bubble around your guy where it's almost like aim assist so you like kind of lock on to the attacker easier with better defensive awareness and it also comes into play with other stuff like auto blocks auto tackles you know when you're running into somebody and your guy just auto tackles for you without even pressing b that's defensive awareness auto blocks all that stuff um defensive awareness comes into play so it's really important to have a decent defensive awareness in my opinion so that's why we went for that. Like, and if we had more skill points to get this interceptions, we probably would to get, because it's only one skill point, we could get 92 interceptions. That'd be cool. Like if you could, if you don't want the extra stamina, you could take that off and add it to the interceptions. And then if you had even more skill points, like getting this interceptions and getting the defensive awareness over 90 would be ideal as well. And that's only three skill points. So that's really not too bad. It's also a pretty good option if you have some extra skill points to work with. But this will be it for the defending page. It's actually very good defensive ability. 93 stand tackling. And we didn't go for like any more increased slide tackling. 86, like I said in my other center back video, 86 is good enough for a center back. You're going to be stand tackling a lot more than slide tackling. So I, I just think 86 is already really good. And you're not going to be able to tell at much of a difference from like 86 to 90 but if y'all want to feel free to add some more skill points to slide tackling if you really want to get that to 90 but this is it for the defensive page let's take a look at dribbling where we have the links archetype and the reason we did this is just to increase our agility and balance you'll go all the way down to this agility right here and then you'll get this links archetype which gives you 82 agility and 79 balance and then make sure to get this one at the top left plus two balance for one skill point. And the reason we did this is because agility improves how fast your player can change directions, which actually helps for defending. Also for dribbling, like when you're on the ball, you might have like steal the ball and then you know how like players are going to be pressing you right after you steal the ball on them. Being able to dribble out of those tight situations and having the extra agility and balance might help quite a bit, which it fits the ball playing defender role, increasing the agility, agility and balance. Um, and then on top of that, like I said, it helps for your defensive ability. And then the balance, it says, um, select this trait to reduce your chances of stumbling and falling when challenging, when challenged by an opponent, which is also important as a center back build. And that's basically why we went for the Lynx archetype. We didn't do this on my other build because we we're focusing on some other stuff. But since this is a ball playing defender build, we had to try to get the Lynx archetype. And it actually makes you feel very responsive, especially when it comes to defending those quick little dudes in front of you. You shouldn't have any problem trying to defend those type of players. And now to the passing page. We have a lot of skill points on this page as well because this fits the ball playing defender role. So what you're going to do is get this short passing, go and get this long passing right here on the right, and then get this other short passing, this vision. It'll give you plus three vision. 
And then you're gonna to go to the right right here and get this lawn passing and vision to give us 73 vision and 82 lawn passing. We were wanting to increase the lawn passing at least to 80 or higher, so that's what we did. And 73 vision, we increased it a bit, but it's not like the amazing, because you're a center back build, the passing attributes to start with are pretty poor, other than like the short passing is decent. So 73 vision on a center back actually isn't too bad. And then you have 82 long pass and 90 short pass. And remember, you, we do have the precision pass perk and the threaded through ball perk. So that'll help for long passing and short passing. So technically, um, our long passing and short passing is actually better than it says right here. And the through ball perk actually increases your vision too. So that's actually a little higher than it says. Um, so when you're using this build, make sure to try some through balls in behind to like your wingers, your striker, your pacey, your players up top. You can actually get some assist, uh, especially if the other team is playing like a high line and kind of pressuring you. Um, then it can actually work pretty well and you can surprise yourself with actually possibly getting some assist as a center back. And then also use the precision pass to like try those RBA passes or R1X passes on PlayStation, those driven passes to find your striker's feet. It'll be difficult for like midfielders or defenders to intercept it because those are really hard passes and you have the precision pass perk. So they're accurate passes as well as having the swerve trait. So the swerve trait can go into play and kind of like avoid some defenders, which is quite nice. Um, and then just remember that the precision pass also works for like X passes, X lofted passes, switching the field and all that good stuff. And honestly, this build could be used as like a holding mid or CDM. I know the dribbling's not crazy. We have 69 dribbling and 78 ball control. Couldn't really increase that much more. But honestly, out of any of the center back builds that I've seen or made, like this one would be the best at trying at CDM because the passing ability is pretty good. You got some agility and balance. Um, it'd kind of just be like, you wouldn't be going forward very much at all. It would just be kind of a holding mid roll where you're kind of just sitting in front of the center backs and locking it down. Uh, but I think it would actually be pretty usable as a CDM build as well. So on to shooting now. We don't have anything on this shooting page. Like I mentioned, we could go for like the weak foot upgrade, but that's just a waste of skill points to be honest as a center back. And especially since we have both of the passing perks. So every single pass you make, you're going to have a five-star weak foot. So it doesn't matter what foot you hit it with, um, unless they're crosses, since we don't have the pinpoint crosser perk. So keep that in mind. If you ever do have a chance of crossing the ball with this build, um, you're not going to have a five-star weak foot. And then we could have possibly went for the heading increase, but there's really no point. I didn't even do this on my other build, which is actually like an aerial threat center back build. You can actually score a lot of goals with headers with this build, but there's really no point of doing it with this build. You're not going to have much... Um, header chances you probably shouldn't even really be going up in the box unless you're like the biggest player on your team then possibly but um, 79 heading is not like the greatest and also you're just not like a tall center back so you're not that much of an aerial threat and this is it for shooting let's go to the last page which is pace where we went for the cheetah archetype and we have 91 acceleration 89 sprint speed we weren't able to get this acceleration or sprint speed so if you have some extra skill points, like three skill points, I would suggest maybe getting the sprint speed so you'll have 91 acceleration and 89 sprint speed. Or if somehow you have like six extra skill points or you can find a way to get some extra skill points, if you really want the increase in pace, you could possibly get 94 acceleration and 91 sprint speed. But I really don't think it's necessary. You're not going to notice much of a difference with the plus two sprint speed. And we didn't really have much of a problem with people getting in behind you, especially if you're in good positioning, marking, marking them well. You really shouldn't have any problem with the pace on this build. And one thing I actually forgot to mention about this build with my teammate using this build, he was actually taking all the set pieces since there was only two of us and we're both center backs. There's no point of letting computer take the set pieces. He was actually taking all the set pieces and corners and putting them on a platter right on my head so I could score a ton of goals with my other center back build. I swear I got like 10 plus header goals with my other center back build while he was crossing it, crossing in all the set pieces and the corners with this build. And I'm not saying you should use this build for the corners and set pieces. I'm sure you'll have other players on your teams that are like wingers or cams or center mids that have a lot better set piece ability. Um, but I guess it just kind of proves that the passing ability is actually really good on this build and it kind of just showcases the passing ability as well. But that'll be it for this center back build. 
If you do give this build a try, please let me know how you liked it. And if y'all tried the other center back build that I posted, please let me know which one y'all like more and why. I'd love to hear that. And if you could hit that like button on this video and smash that subscribe button on my channel if you aren't already subscribed, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you guys for watching. Y'all have a great rest of y'all's day and peace out. All right, just like a Peter dra drain this game out. <laughs> yeah, it's game now, pretty much. They might, they're gonna lose it. The game's gonna make them lose it. The ball. Yeah. Oh my gosh, shoot it. That's it. Oh! Again. Yeah! <laughs>